Everything About Kurdistan is an unbiased organization striving for the unity of Kurdistan. Everything About Kurdistan is not taking side to any party, ideology, leader or clan. We strictly stand behind a united Kurdistan and please when you comment down below keep that in mind that we don't need any more conflicts between each other. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram where we publish daily news about the ongoing situation in Kurdistan and much more interesting things as polls and quizzes and more information about the upcoming projects of everything about Kurdistan. Check out our other video where we talk about the current situation between PKK and KDP and discuss whether we can expect a civil war or not. Link will be in the description box below. In Mahabad, 1946, Iranian-occupied Kurdistan, Ghazi Mohammed formed a new party which he described as a democratic Kurdish party. During these times, the ongoing nationalistic powers of Rojhalat was strengthened by the forces of the Barzani clan, who was led by Mullah Mustafa Barzani, a fugitive of the Iraqi authorities after a failed coup in Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan. Looking at the relationship between Qazi Muhammad and Mustafa Barzani, it is known to have been complicated. Let's take a look at British author David McDowell's book Modern History of the Kurds, page 242, where he writes that the relation between Barzani and Qazi Muhammad in reality wasn't easy. Qazi said to Barzani, there is to be only one party and you must not operate separately from it. This came after that Mustafa Barzani showed interest in forming a Barzani-based dispensation of the KDP in Bashur. The Barzani did, however, form a counterpart of Qazi's party in Bashur, just the opposite to what Qazi had instructed Barzani to do. The communists which at the time were very powerful in Bashur, opposed Barzani's ambition to form a KDP in Bashur, arguing for that this would lead to more fragmentation between the Iraqi-Iranian border of Kurdistan. In time though, the communists would give in. They joined the Barzanis in Bashur and KDP was formed as the party held its first congress in Baghdad, 16th of August 1946. Mustafa Barzani was named president in exile. Later that year, as the Mahabad Republic was overthrown and Qazi Muhammad was executed by Iran, Mustafa Barzani fled to the Soviet Union and was years later welcomed back by the new Iraqi regime led by Abd al-Karim Qasim. Since then, the KDP influence under the Barzanis has formed a stronger and stronger grip over Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan. Going forward in time and looking at Bakur, 30 years later, the PKK organization was formed in 1978 as a result of ongoing Turkish oppression of the Kurdish people in Bakur, Turkish-occupied Kurdistan. The PKK movement went into a guerrilla war with Turkey in 1984, operating with bases from mainly Rojava, Bashur and Lebanon. Abdullah Öcalan, the PKK leader, got himself a holy status among Kurds, especially within his own party after Turkey imprisoned him in 1999. But the KDP and PKK engaged with each other years before that, as early as 1981, when PKK signed an agreement with the KDP, giving the PKK free transit rights and rights to build bases in KDP territory. The PKK would expand their camps in Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan, something that worried Turkey, and in time, Turkish military would pressure the KDP. The two parts, Abdullah Öcalan and Masud Barzani, Mustafa Barzani's son, met in 1984 and 1985 in Damascus to discuss the current situation. It is, however, most commonly accepted that the two parts never agreed on anything that would bring them forward in their relationship. Instead, the PKK signed an agreement with the rival party PUK in 1988, an agreement that would hold on all the way into the first Kurdish civil war in 1994, when PKK stood on the side of PUK, backed by Iran, versus the KDP, backed by Turkey. The Turkish support would leave traces on the party KDP for a long time to come.
Turkey started their offensive in Bashur, Iraqi occupied Kurdistan. In the beginning of the Kurdish civil war, they launched the so called Operation Steel with the goal to extinguish the PKK from Iraqi occupied Kurdistan. In May 3rd, a delegation from the KDP agreed with Turkey to forbid PKK from keeping their bases in Bashur. The very next day, Turkish armed forces left Bashur. For the upcoming years between 1994 and 1996, the PUK and KDP would be busy fighting each other in the first Kurdish civil war. The infamous Battle of Hawlir or Erbil in 1996 sums up the toxic spirit between the Kurdish parties of these times. In the winter of 1997, PKK and KDP clashed again as PKK became a more involved part in the civil war. As a PUK ally still located in Bashur, the PKK were several times targeted by the KDP. Turkey saw the Kurdish civil war as an opportunity to destroy PKK. They launched a new operation called Operation Hammer in the KRG in May 1997. The operation got green light from KDP and caused PKK heavy casualties but was in the end unsuccessful as PKK kept their presence in Iraqi occupied Kurdistan. A few months later Turkey re-entered Bashur saying that they only wanted to bring a ceasefire between KDP and PUK. The operation resulted in heavy PKK and PUK casualties. The civil war would in time end as US came in to negotiate a ceasefire between PUK and KDP, temporarily ending the conflicts between those parties but also between Abdullah Öcalan and Masud Barzani, at least for the moment. In the negotiations between PUK and KDP, one of the main points was to prevent PKK from using areas in Bashur, something that never happened, since we know PKK even today is present in Bashur. The conflict between the PKK and KDP has become more apparent since the start of the Syrian revolution. Basically, the Kurdish Syrian opposition parties have always been supported by the PKK, the KDP or the PUK. Over the past three decades, the PKK has become the strongest party in Western Kurdistan due to Öcalan's presence in Rojava until 1999. The PKK has also given Rojava Kurds prominent positions in its hierarchy. For example, Dr. Bahuz Erdal and Muslim Kubani Abdi, who both are from Rojava. Therefore, it was unsurprising that the PYD with its military wing, YPG, who has ties with the PKK, became the leading Kurdish party in Syria. By now, the differences between the KDP and the PKK was clear. While the KDP preached for an independent Kurdistan in Bashur of the regions Nineveh, Duhok, Hawlir, Kirkuk, Sleimani and parts of Dijela, the PKK for the moment renounces the independence idea and works for building up the Kurdish identity in a society of coexistence and education. In late 2020, the situation between PKK and KDP escalated once more. This happened after years of disagreement between the Kurdish umbrella organization National Kurdish Council, which is affiliated by the KDP and the People's Council of West Kurdistan, affiliated to the government in Rojava. As a result of shown reluctance to cooperate, residents in Qamishli in the northeast parts of Rojava organized a demonstration calling for unity among the Kurdish political parties. The two parts kept on throwing accusation against each other. The PYD was accused by Barzani to cooperate with the regime in Damascus, while the KDP was accused by Rojava of doing the same thing with Ankara. All of these accusations have come after the both sides desperately trying to cooperate, not at least when they formed the Kurdish Supreme Committee in Hawler in 2012, which worked as a governing body between the KDP and the PYD, with equal members from the two sides in the goal to lead the Kurdish movement together. Back then, KNC led by Barzani, later withdrew from the cooperation because of clashes between the YPG and a group of protesters in Amuda, where at least six people were killed. 
In 8th of November, PKK called the relationship between the KDP and the AKP problematic and harmful. Turkey had by then many times fought PKK in Kandil without any response from KRG or the KDP party. The YPG forces stood without any backup from their alleged Kurdish brothers and sisters within Peshmerga as neither KRG or KDP defended Afrin or central northern Rojava from Turkey in 2018 and 2019. Defenders of this policy claim that the KDP has their hands tied, arguingly they can't go up against a heavy power as Turkey since Turkey is way too powerful and that this would destroy the relationship between KDP and Turkey. Critics call KDP traitors and claims that fighting against Kurds with the cooperation of one of Kurds biggest enemies of all time is a clear act of treason and that this in no case can be justified. The absolute recent events between the KDP and the PKK where several fighters from both sides was injured and killed in clashes is worrying many people that we might see a second Kurdish civil war. Of course, every part know deep inside that a Kurdish civil war only would cause us damage rather than helping us. And in our next video, we will discuss if we can expect a civil war or not. Until then, don't forget to like this video, comment your opinion down below and hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you don't miss any further videos on this channel.